Joining me now, Assistant Majority Leader in the Senate, Dick Durbin, the Democrat of Illinois, also Lindsey Graham, Republican of South Carolina. Welcome to you both. I want to debate income inequality, but Senator Graham, I do want to start with you and talk politics. It's a big focus. You saw that debate last night in Iowa and in your state, as I just referenced a moment ago, it is Newt Gingrich going away in South Carolina over his rivals Romney and Ron Paul. Is he for real? Yeah, I think if the election were held tomorrow, he'd win South Carolina. And I saw bits and pieces of the debate. It's clear to me that Newt Gingrich has established himself as the Republican front runner. And uh, yeah, he's for real. Is he different? You said that you've talked to him. You feel like he's different than he was. Mm -hmm. What's changed? Mm -hmm. Well, he, you know, at last night he took a lot of shots. I thought he handled it all well. He was very calm. You know, he's been out of government for a long time. He's matured as a person. Uh, he's reattached himself to his faith. He seemed to be, uh, you know, we had a good conversation about energy policy, talked about the past. You know, the coup started in my office, so obviously the guy doesn't hold grudges. But, yeah, I think he's uh, leveled out as a person. And all of us, even his worst critics, would say that Newt, uh, is a guy that can really hold a room, uh, a, a very smart fella. And on his watch, he and President Clinton did some big things together, uh, welfare reform, balancing the budget. So, you know, during his time, a lot of good things got done, and he had troubles, too. Well, quickly before I move on, you, you led the coup against him as Speaker back in the House is what you're referring mm -hmm. to. Would you endorse him uh, for president now? I'm not going to endorse him, but I think he could beat President Obama, and I would certainly support him as president if he won the nomination. I think uh, we're in a good spot to win this election. It is our election to lose the president. Will you, will you endorse somebody else? Or? His policies are nowhere. Will you endorse anyone? I, I don't know, David. I, you know, I don't think so. I really had a, a real close relationship with Senator McCain. I don't have that with the people in the field. I like them all. I hope Ron Paul does well. And if he, if he doesn't make it, I hope he'll help us as a party defeat President Obama because we can't stand four more years of the policies that are in place now. So I hope Ron Paul will help us uh, as a party defeat President Obama. As opposed to you running as a third party candidate. Yeah, you know, the Ron Paul element of the party is real. He has a lot of enthusiasm. We're, we're better together. Uh, we have a common uh, political uh, uh, desire, and that is to end the, the, the Obama's, Obama's policies, not four more years of things that are clearly hurting the country. And you're not going to be better off uh, with a second term of Obama. Clearly, you're not better off now. And I don't see any hope of people being better off. And I hope. Ron Paul will help us uh, make that case. Senator Durbin, let me turn to you again. Income inequality is a, is a big debate. Before we get to the broader points, let's talk about the news, and that is the payroll tax cut extension. This is something that Republicans and Democrats are debating now. Is this going to happen? Will it get extended? I can tell you, David, it's the highest priority of the president and the Democrats in Congress. We're talking about a payroll tax cut for almost 160 million Americans. And what it comes down to for the average Illinoisan is about $1,000 a year. If Congress fails to extend the payroll tax cut, it's a new tax, an added tax, next year for average working people. What the president said in Kansas really applies to this debate. Mm -hmm. This is a make or break moment for the middle class. And to this point, the Republicans have consistently said they will refuse to increase the taxes on the wealthiest people in America one penny if that's what it takes to make sure that working families get a payroll tax cut. It is a clear defining moment, a contrast between the parties that the president has made clear. And we have said, for example, we will exempt the first million dollars in income for the wealthiest in America and just put a surtax on the second million dollars mm -hmm. that they earn each year. And the Republicans said well, no. Se Senator Graham. They refuse to allow us. Go, go, go ahead. Finish your point, Senator. Well, they've refused to allow us to use this millionaire surtax, whether it's to save the jobs of teachers and firefighters and policemen, or invest in America in infrastructure. And what they've said is these are the job creators. In fact, what we know now is that among small business people in America, about 1% make money at this level, one and a half million dollars a year. So in order to protect that 1% uh, of small business owners okay. and to protect 
the 1% of taxpayers, they are turning down a tax cut for working families. Senator Graham, Republicans in the House are saying that if you want this tax cut extension, you got to do more. And they talk about the Keystone Pipeline. Let's show the map of this. This would be an oil pipeline that would be extended. It goes from Alberta all the way down south, and the dotted portion there would be the extension. Environmentalists are opposed to it. The administration says, no, we'll take this up after the election. Does this have to be part of the equation to ultimately get a tax, payroll tax cut extension? I think the House's package that does extend the payroll tax cuts has a lot of things I would support, like the pipeline, uh, the dock fix, some uh, other boiler max regulatory reform. But at the end of the day, the payroll tax will get extended as it is now. It won't get expanded. It'll get extended. And we'll find a way to pay for it in a bipartisan fashion. This idea of uh, taxing one group to pay for a tax cut for another is not going to sell. The pipeline's probably not going to sell. And it is important that we extend the tax uh, cut through, through next year, but it's even more important we come up with sustainable policies that right. will turn America around. And this idea, what is a fair share, David? Dick, tell me. What is, pick a number, tell me. Tell, tell the American people, what should the top income earners, what should the top rate be? Pick a number and tell me what's fair. Let me talk in that vein about the middle class, the fight for the middle class that the president talked about this week. And so people understand, here are some quick facts that really go to this question of income inequality and to the fight for the middle class. On earnings and savings, incomes have stagnated while wealthy incomes have skyrocketed. On housing, equities and home values, half of 2006 levels. When it comes to retirement, a quarter in polling say they will need to work until at least age 80 to live comfortably in retirement. This was the point the president made this week in Kansas. Watch. But for most Americans, the basic bargain that made this country great has eroded. Long before the recession hit, hard work stopped paying off for too many people. Fewer and fewer of the folks who contributed to the success of our economy actually benefited from that success. And yet wealthy Americans, he went on to say, have gone on to do better. Senator Graham, is the issue, as the president argues, income inequality? Or is it something more fundamental no. in the economy? Is it national decline? I think the issue is that his failure, he's, he's got a failed presidency, and he didn't talk about the things he has done to make America a stronger, better place in a bipartisan fashion. Ronald Reagan sat down with Tip O'Neill to solve the Social Security problem. Bill Clinton sat down with Newt Gingrich to balance the budget and end welfare as we know it. This whole speech is about pitting one group of Americans against the others, and his policies are the biggest threat to the hardworking Americans. If you're a union guy, the pipeline would be good news for you because it'll create 20,000 jobs. The NLRB in the hands of this administration almost cost a facility in South Carolina Carolina that would have cost 10,000 hardworking South Carolinians their job because of union politics. The environmental policies of this administration make it very hard to create a job and you can't borrow right. money because of Dodd-Frank. The speech, my, the speech wasn't about his successes, it's about hardworking Americans and class warfare. And I asked the question again, Mr. President, what is a fair share? Pick a number. Tell me how much you want to take in taxes at the top rate. Pick a number and let's see if it makes right, economic Senator sense Dermot. or it's all politics. What is the number? Uh, David, let me just say that the president has tried for three straight years to work directly with the Republicans to solve the problems of this country. Even this year, on three different occasions, he has met with Speaker Boehner and with the Republican leader uh, Cantor to try to work on our deficit, and each time they walked out on him. This week in the United, or this last week in the United States Senate, as an illustration, on two separate occasions, Republicans used the filibuster. Th something they said they wouldn't do except under extraordinary circumstances to stop an appointment of a woman, a well, uh, unanimously well-qualified woman to the U.S. District Court in the District of Columbia and to stop the appointment of former Ohio Attorney General Richard Cordray to head the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. For the president now to say, listen, we have a clear choice. The Republicans will not cooperate to work to move this economy forward. We have got to focus on what the future will be. What the Republicans offer us is the same formula that brought us into this recession. Cut taxes on the wealthy 
and cut that government oversight that makes sure we have clean drinking water, air we can breathe, and make sure that Wall Street doesn't run Washington instead of the 20, other way 20, around. 20 seconds, Senator Graham. Do Republicans have a hard time talking about inequality in the country when it comes to incomes and comes to the economy? The best way to get America equal in, is to grow the economy. The Obama policies have been a miserable failure. They had the Congress, a Democratic majority. They increased spending by 24 percent. If you count the stimulus, by 80 percent. So this Consumer Bureau that they want to pass is under the Federal Reserve. No appropriation oversight, no board. It is something out of the Stalinist era. The reason Republicans don't want to vote for it is we want a board, not one person making all the regulatory decisions. And there's no oversight under this person. He gets a check from the Federal Reserve. We want him under the Congress so we can oversee the overseer. So his policies are why hardworking Americans are going to lose now, and they will never get better in the second term of Obama administration. That's why we're going to win as Republicans. Finally, Senator uh, Durbin, as you look at the president's prospects, you look at the status of his uh, approval rating, how much of a challenge does he face for re-election? Let me tell you what the president has done, particularly in the last few months, where he has stepped up with a jobs program supported across the board by the American people and said to the Republicans, either join me in moving America forward and creating jobs or face the next election for a referendum on whether we're going to return to the failed Republican economic policies. I think that is a clear contrast. What he said in Kansas brought us back down to basics. This right. is a make or break moment for the middle class in America. All right, we're going to leave it there. Thanks to both of you. David, if I could just add, David, the president introduced a budget that got no votes. He's rejected his own fiscal commission. He gave a speech that had nothing to do with turning that's around not, the economy. That's not right. He won't tell us what a fair the share debate, is the debate because will, it's all politics. The debate will continue. Thank you both very much. Coming up.